the viewer. So yeah, my name is Alex Sachs, uh, and I've been working in the Dell field for 15, 16, maybe even 17 years now. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about a different kind of Dell. Uh, we at Wuxi, we of course mainly use uh, the good old fashioned solution phase Dells. Those are the Dells that most people use and it's very successful and it's a great way of finding hits against a wide variety of different target types. But they do have some limitations and some of those limitations can be solved by making one bead, one compound Dells, or as we call them, OBOT Dells. And this is an area that we moved into about 18 months uh, back. So let me recap a little bit about what their more traditional solution phase Dells are. Uh, first, they start off with a barcode, which is shown here. Uh, they have the, the warhead, which is on the other side. Hey, Alex. Alex, yes. sorry to interrupt. This is Christian. Uh, we're only seeing the, we're not seeing presenter view. We're actually just seeing the PowerPoint first slide. Oh, really? Okay. There we go. Now we so, see slide two. So if it's not working in the presenter view, I'll just go like this. Is the Makes slide sense. showing up? Yep, we can see your mouse okay. and we can see slide two. Okay. okay, great. Well, almost everyone in this room knows what the schematic looks like anyways. And uh, the main point here is that you have a covalent, long, flexible linker connecting the barcode to, to, to the warhead. So this is what your traditional normal Dell looks like. And these Dells are screened through basically what is a binding assay. So you, uh, you collect the target that you want to screen on some sort of a resin. You add the Dell, which is a very complex mixture. You wash away what doesn't bind. You capture what was bound. You elute this, and then you are free to sequence the barcode. And from that sequence, you can then tell what was the structure of the ligand that bound to my target. So this is a quite successful workflow. Um, it's been around for 10 or 20 years, and it's what we at Wuxi mainly do and what most other groups do. Okay, but what are the limitations to this? Um, well, in some cases with certain targets, you would like to run a biochemical screen instead of a binding-based assay. Or you would like to run a cellular functional screen. In particular, you would like to determine the cellular uptake of your ligand. And of course, this is a very hard thing to accomplish if your ligand is covalently connected to a gigantic barcode. Um, so, for instance, if you were working in macrocyclic space, which uh, Christian was just speaking of, or antibacterial space or degrader space, um, it might be nice to be able to run an assay and determine cellular uptake in addition to target engagement. So how do you go from the power of normal Dells um, and remove that limitation so that you can do those kinds of screens. And the answer is, of course, the one bead, one, co co one compound Dells, the, the OBOT Dells. Um, I've published along with Brian Pagel, who did the lion's share, the actual work, um, a couple of POCs that was published in 2019 and 2020. Um, and the basis for how this works is that you have a bead now, and attached to the bead is the barcode. And attached to this bead is also about 10 femtomoles of your ligand. And what happens then is that you can, you can choose how you, what you want to put these beads in, but in the POCs, which we did in 2019 and 2020, we put this bead within an aqueous droplet. And depending upon what the size of this droplet is, when you release the ligand from the bead, you can end up with micromolar concentrations of your ligand. And now your ligand is free in the solution to interact with the target of your choice or to go up inside of a cell. Um, so let me just quickly show one example of one of the POCs, which we did very quickly. Uh, we inhibited ATX. Um, the assay is shown here. And in droplets where the enzyme wasn't active, these droplets are dark. And in droplets where the enzyme is active, the substrate is cleaved, it then fluoresces, and the fluorescence signal then shows up. And we can see this baseline between these two distributions, giving us a Z prime score of 0.88. Brian and his lab ran this assay, and we discovered active hits. So, so that was an, an exemplar POC. But let's talk about what this talk is really about. Um, it is about how did we do the QC for the OBOP Dell that we made. So we at Wuxi, we have a group of 20 to 30 chemists now who are just making these OBOP Dells and they're making these OBOP Dells for our partners. 
And of course, we need ways to be able to QC these OVOCTLs and to make sure that we are indeed making what we think. Okay, so for the DEL that we had made in those POCs, it was a pretty simple DEL with about 50,000 library members, as shown here, a split size of 110 by 610. And the way in which this DEL was made is it was made with screening beads. So these are the beads that you screen. And this is the UV cleavable li 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 linker, an example of one, which can release the, uh, the compound which you make and a scarless cleavage. What we do is when we make these DELs, in addition to the screening beads, we spike in these much larger rinkamid QC beads. And what's nice about these QC beads is that we can cleave them off of TFA, and then this entire linker is cleaved off. And this linker is both, it's large, it's easier to see, it's very UV active. Um, and so even if the reaction, if the compounds which we're making are very small and very polar, we can still see them when they're cleaved from the bead. And so we made the assumption that chemistry, which works with the QC beads, would be working with the screening beads in the same exact fashion. Uh, the assumption is perfectly fine, but it wasn't something that we actually proved. And what I'm going to do in the next few slides is run a quick test in order to find out does the chemistry on the QC beads actually work in the same manner as the screening beads? Because, of course, this is the entire foundation for how these OBOCDELs are actually made. Of course, we don't care about the products made from the QC beads. We're just assuming that they're giving us the same thing as what we're finding or what we would find from the screening bead. So how did we do this little test? So we take 50 megs of screening beads and we take five megs of the QC beads. We put it into a single tube. We run the chemistry that we want to do. We then separate the big beads from the small beads. And with the screening beads, we then cleave with a UV cleavage. And with the larger beads, we then do a TFA cleavage. And we try to find out, do the QC beads give us the the same yields as the screening beads in the same product. So let me show you one example here. Um, this is two steps and these chemistries work quite well. And so when we take our larger QC beads and we do our acid cleavage, the desired product is shown here and it looks to be about maybe an 80% yield. However, we do see a few other things showing up and these other products are smaller, they're more polar and it turns out that when we do the UV cle cleavage, these other smaller products we don't see, probably because they're smaller, less UV active, and or they're showing up in the solvent front. And so this is one case where we would look and we'd say, well, we actually think that the acid cleavage is giving us a better sense for what is going on, because the UV cleavage seems to be artificially show showing up with a higher yield. So let's look at chemistry, which we haven't fully worked out. So we're saying, well, let's do a sulfonylation, but we don't know how many equivalents that we, we want to add, how long we want it to sit, what the solvent is. So we take a test case where the reaction didn't go well. Um, and in this case, we get about, uh, let's say, a 20% uh, uh, per, yield from what we started with. Um, when we do the acid cleavage, however, when we look at the UV cle cleavage, the desired product one shown here, we can't see whatsoever because, of course, this is a, a scarless uh, cleavage, which means that the product is very small. Uh, it's probably showing up in the, sol sol in the solvent front. And let's look at a third example. Uh, this is a Chan lamb, which has gone maybe for these conditions. This is going about a 3% yield. Uh, however, when we look at this product using the UV cle cle cleavage, it would suggest that we're getting a 99% yield. And again, that's because the product that is being uh, released after the UV cle cleavage is very small, it's very polar, and it's coming up in the solvent front. Okay, so what are the conclusions from this? Well, first of all, the QC and the screening beads do produce the same uh, pr the same final product. Uh, uh, results. Um, however, the QC beads allow us to get a much better sense for how pure that product is. So internally, what we do is we use the QC beads for all the different things that we want to do. And what we do with the UV, cle 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 UV cleavage is that we simply spot check with that instead. Okay, so this talk is 
pretty short, but uh, I would like to acknowledge the entire group. Um, we have, like I said, uh, an HTC OBAC team, uh, roughly 25 to 30 chemists, um, and they've been working in this OBAC field for about 18 months now. Um, and, yeah, and we make these OBAC Dells for ourselves and for our uh, partners. And with that, uh, I can take any questions. Hey, Alex. Uh, great talk. This is Zikai from Atlanta. OK, it's better now. Yeah, so my question is um, that the example you showed where you have uh, cider products. And so how that would influence you in terms of doing the hits resources? Uh, for example, if this particular compound become a hit, do you have to make multiple compounds? How do you do the hits resources and the validation? Uh, for the OBAC library. Yeah, so at this point in time, we at Wuxi, we make OBAC DELs for our partners, but we aren't currently doing the screening in-house. So we actually haven't gone through this HIT follow-up process. Um, with that said, there is an expectation that with the OBAC DELs and the kinds of screens that we will be doing in the future, um, we do have an expectation that the false positive rate is going to be different than with the traditional solution phase DELs. And so it might be useful to go back into data such as this and try to determine if certain truncates and other things could be the cause of um, hits. Any other questions? We got one over here. Yeah, Alex, uh, yeah, thanks for the talk. I was curious about the composition of your two different beads. Are these tentagel, can matrix, or do they vary? And, and would you expect that to lead to different uh, chemistry? Results? Yeah, so, so these are both tentagel beads. And, and the question of would we expect them to result in different chemistries, I, I think the short answer is one bead is physically much larger and the linkers are different. And so the que question is, uh, or, or the, the, the problem is without proof that the chemistry is the same for both of these beads, you have to go through this effort of actually showing it to be true. Um, right. And I, I think that's especially true when you work with partners. If you make these OBAC Dells just for yourself, you know, you can probably take a bigger risk. Any final questions for Alex? I don't see anything on the online portal. Again, thank you, Alex, so much for your talk. Okay. Nice thank to you. see you digitally. And I think with that, we have a break.